knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. We just learned about energy flow and nutrient cycling, from autotrophs to heterotrophs, as well as detritivores. So now let's look at food webs as a whole. Food webs represent feeding relationships within a community, and they also outline the transfer of energy from plants at the bottom of the trophic levels, through herbivores, all the way to carnivores at the top. Normally, food webs consist of a number of food chains meshed together. Each food chain is a descriptive diagram including a series of arrows, each pointing from one species to another, representing the flow of food energy from one feeding group of organisms to another. There are two types of food chains, the grazing food chain, beginning with autotrophs, and the detrital food chain, beginning with dead organic matter. In a grazing food chain, energy and nutrients move from plants to the herbivores consuming them and then to the carnivores or omnivores preying upon the herbivores. In a detrital food chain, dead organic matter of plants and animals is broken down by decomposers, such as bacteria and fungi, then moving to detritivores and then carnivores. Food webs offer an important tool for investigating the ecological interactions that define energy flows and predator-prey relationships. The fundamental purpose of food webs is to describe the feeding relationship among species in a community. All the species in the food webs can be distinguished into basal species, or autotrophs such as plants, intermediate species like herbivores and intermediate level carnivores, such as grasshoppers and scorpions, or top predators, meaning high level carnivores, such as foxes. These feeding groups are referred to as trophic levels. Basal species occupy the lowest trophic level as primary producers. They use solar energy to generate chemical energy and build their own structures. The second trophic level consists of herbivores. These are first consumers. The remaining trophic levels include carnivores that consume animals at trophic levels below them. For example, in a desert environment, the second consumers, located on trophic level 3, would include birds and scorpions. These animals act as both predator and prey. Continuing, tertiary consumers making up the fourth trophic level include bird predators such as eagles and foxes or mountain lions. Grouping all species into different functional groups or trophic levels helps us simplify and understand the relationships among these species. Trophic cascades are powerful indirect interactions that can control entire ecosystems. These occur when predators limit the density or behavior of their prey and thereby enhance survival of the next lower trophic level. A classic example of such a cascade is the reintroduction of gray wolves to Yellowstone National Park, which reduced the number of elk and changed their behavior. Again, food webs illustrate energy flow from primary producers to primary consumers, or herbivores, and from primary consumers to secondary consumers, or carnivores. The structure of food webs suggests that productivity and abundance of populations at any given trophic level are controlled by the productivity and abundance of populations in the trophic level below them. This phenomenon is called bottom-up control. Correlations in abundance or productivity between consumers and their resources are considered as evidence for bottom-up control. For example, plant population densities control the abundance of herbivore populations, which in turn control the densities of the carnivore populations. Thus, the biomass of herbivores usually increases with primary productivity in terrestrial ecosystems. Top-down control occurs when the population density of a consumer can control that of its resource. For example, predator populations can control the abundance of prey species. Under top-down control, the abundance or biomass of lower trophic levels depends on effects from consumers at higher trophic levels. A trophic cascade is a type of top-down interaction that describes the indirect effects of predators. In a trophic cascade, predators induce effects that cascade down the food chain and affect biomass of organisms at least two links away. Nelson Hairston, Frederick Smith, and Larry Slobodkin first introduced the concept of top-down control with the frequently quoted, the world is green proposition. 
They proposed that the world is green because carnivores depress herbivores and keep herbivore populations in check. Otherwise, herbivores would consume most of the vegetation. Indeed, a bird exclusion study demonstrated that there were significantly more insects and leaf damage in plots without birds compared to the control. Now that we've covered food webs and trophic cascades, we are beginning to understand how interactions between species in a community have profound effects on an ecosystem as a whole. Let's continue this line of thinking and examine behavioral ecology next. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.